great. I can barely see. Makes it more exciting, huh? But at least the uh, that sunset, hopefully it was worth it. Look at that. That looks really cool. Enough light to to see that way at least. Not the way we're going though. <sighs> so I didn't get what I wanted to with the sunset. There was enough time, but hopefully you like what I did get. And uh, <laughs> I forgot my flashlight in my rush, and now it's pretty dark. I'm uh, just trying to make it back to the Jeep for the fire going and eating. <laughs> I'm in a place where I'm pretty sure it's notorious for Bigfoot-like creatures. And right now, at this time of the, uh, the evening, is the perfect time where ambush predators come out like mountain lions. So, <laughs> who knows what might happen if I get pebbles thrown at me or hear some, something stalking me. And I don't, I've been through that before. But it's pretty insane to consider that these creatures exist. And not like, I don't think they're supernatural or anything at all like that. I think they just... You know, are, are elusive and discreet for the most part. And uh, they get caught because they're not infallible. Or they want to be seen. They want your attention because they're curious and interested. And I, uh, it's, it's incredible that such an intelligent hominid species exists <laughs> today in our modern age. We're not willing to even give it a thought, a chance to go see if, if it's real, to uh, validate it. And yet it's, there's so much evidence that's come forward. There's so many eyewitnesses, people that are far more versed in the wilderness than even I am that have come forward to, to say like they've had an encounter with these, these hominids, you know, like just like a, the individual who I, I interviewed recently that had that saw those tracks in this area, like that, that that individual, like he knows a lot about hunting and tracking and and uh, you know just being out in in the outdoors. He's definitely a woodsman, and so and the, and the fact that we have place names that elude to the presence of this hominid. Like that should really tell us a lot. Like we, we sh it shouldn't be something that's doubted. It shouldn't be something that's, uh, you know, laughed at. I mean, sure, question it. Absolutely question it, it's about ability. But support efforts to actually go find out if it's, uh, if it's real or not. Like you have professors uh, you know, and people with PhDs, very few of them that are out there putting their reputation on the line and think that there's a val valid evidence and overwhelming evidence that such a creature exists. But we're not willing to, as a whole, uh, in, give the support that academia, the people in academia need to feel like they can, they can go and like do this. Because, I mean, think about it. A lot of them have spent a huge part of their lives going to school, getting a PhD, <clears throat> uh, just getting known and getting a reputation just to be listened to in their field. And the last thing they want to do is stake all that on something like Bigfoot that has a lot of... Uh, Uh, just here's that gate. Let's take on something like like Bigfoot that has a lot of ridicule. So the reality, if we want academia to really take an invested look at this thing, it's up to us as people to give them the support, to push for it, so that they have a place to to stand on and be like, look, 
there's a lot of support for this let's get let's look at it because right now like that's not what's happening right now we're just <laughs> it's we're just like attacking one another in these little cliques and these little groups and we're not actually making like making like a progress that could be being made i mean that's sad i just made it back to the jeep and uh we need these people with these disciplines that can go out there that understand private you know behaviors and that, that can get funding and resources to go and verify this this hominid and who knows what else all we need is to verify one you know just keep it conservative you know like the first thing we need to do is just prove that they exist we don't need in my opinion to go to be liberal in our you know hypothesis and sorry we don't need to be liberal in our hypothesis and uh assumptions and speculation because it's already hard enough just to say that such a creature exists so just you know trying to find like the most conservative evidence of their existence i feel is the right step forward and then afterwards we can work on you know what other capabilities they may have what other as they like to call it woo may exist but if we want like to get a, a, a you know a good foothold and be taken seriously and it gives the support to experts that may be able to get the funding and be able to see this thing in a, in a new light that that we can't because we don't have that skill set and knowledge then we have to just keep it simple and you know very conservative in what we the evidence that we bring forward or suggest so that we're taken seriously and then we can take the next step once that's established once it's established the bigfoot's real then we can make more speculations and hypothesis on more woo but to do that now is like i feel like premature because that just makes it even harder to prove if we're talking about you know interdimensions and you know, like that they can vanish to thin air or go invisible or whatever, whatever it may be like the, the speculation on the matter to explain <coughs> how they seem to vanish. So I'm not saying that's bad, but to begin with, just to begin with, we just stick with <coughs> more conservative hypothesis and speculation to uh, build a solid backing for this hypothesis of this North American hominid and give the support as a whole, as, as the people as a whole, like you know, as a group and a large population to academia <clears throat> to push them and support them to look at this more seriously. Because honestly, it's scary. <clears throat> it's, it terrified me the first time I had an encounter with these creatures because I thought I knew, you know, like... The, the forest i thought i knew the mountains i thought like, i felt safe because i knew what to do with the these you know other apex predators but we should know about what to do when we run into one of these or to even know that they're around you know like in my first incident like i thought it was a person so i just outflanked it went around and uh, it got really angry like it, it just started shaking stuff and like throwing big stuff like like limbs and rocks at me like if i had been aware that they even existed and that if something's throwing like a little stuff at you from the woods and making noise but not showing themselves, it may not be a person. It could be one of these these creatures, and that may be a friendly you know behavior. But if you get too close, then it's going to get aggressive. It's going to defend itself just like anything else. And I would have liked to have known that. So I when that happened, I wouldn't have just assumed it was a person trying to mess with me, and gone in there nonchalant thinking like i'm just gonna get this these people doing this to me like that's it's not it's not cool like to have like an apex predator out there and we don't know about it and for the most part like the encounters i've had and and the uh interactions have been friendly 
but still we I sh- it shouldn't be something that we that we that we that we don't know about that we laugh at until like we're face to face with something that shouldn't exist there there shouldn't be people out there where they're getting harassed by these these hominid species at their home and, and they can't do anything about it they have no one to call like who are you going to call the police you know the national forest wildlife um and be like, hey, I have a Sasquatch like that keeps like smacking my house, throwing stuff at me, and peeking in my window. What do I do? Like, you know, it's just like these people are are like like victims of this system because it's laughed at, and they're just stuck. Because what do they do? Like they they don't have anyone to call. They don't know like any remedies. Uh, you know, like they know what to do for bears and cougars. What do you do for, with something like this that's intelligent that you can't even, like, talk to anyone to help you, uh, you know, set boundaries with this species uh, or stop it from, from like, harassing you, you know? Maybe if that's not its intent, that's that's what happens a lot of the times, especially at these homes. You know, I get to go to places and have the chance to run into them, and so it's, it's more interesting for me. Like, I can leave whenever I want, but I could see based on like my my first experiments of just being in the jeep you know like they, they just kept waking me up you know once they got to the point where like the pebble throws weren't enough and i i was already like kind of jaded from it uh, which just shows you how long that went for they would throw bigger ones they would run up to the side of the jeep and smack it and run away you know they escalated it because they wanted my attention and so i can only imagine how how, how inconvenient it must get if you're in a pl- if you live in a place in the wilderness where the, these uh, hominids are around and they just they just don't leave you alone. Anyway, I'm going on a tangent and I need to get my fire going. Finally made it back to the jeep. Uh, but yeah, you know, like just I'd say keep it conservative. We di- we don't we don't we all we need to do is prove that they exist and then we can go uh, go crazy with. Uh, what the the what ifs the what ifs how they do this and that first just they exist just we have to verify that you know secondly you know you can support uh, you know academia and the only way to do that is to kind of unify and change hearts and minds of people and show them like these these uh how many species whatever they are they, they, they do exist they do exist and uh we need to pressure you know like in my opinion you know like the governing forces and the different echelons that control like wilderness and place in the, like the outdoors that it for safety we should know how these that they exist and and how they operate their behaviors so that we can be safe or and so that we can respect their territory and have a more enjoyable time out in, out in the wilderness just like we 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 know with bears and mountain lions we respect their territory if we see them if you know like a bear like starts huffing and puffing and stomping his his uh his paws you know that you know that that means a warning to back away or else i'm going to charge you and we need to know that stuff about the species to protect ourselves and to give them the space that they need and to know like when there's evidence that they're around anyway uh it's uh it's fire time getting cold and hungry Have a good night. Unless I talk to you later tonight, drinking wine, honey wine. All right, bye. Good morning. It's a lovely and fine day today. And it's going to be an early start. So we're going to head down through the mesa and try to find Clearwater Creek. I'm hoping that we'll find another trail. It may be an actually established trail, not like the social one we found yesterday. But we should be going quick. I'm wearing my Byron Five Fingers. We're going to be packing light. Uh, I have a little bit of <clears throat> beef jerky for snacks just to keep me fueled up. Uh, we're going to have a little fishing net because we're going to try to fish down there. And actually where Clearwater Creek connects with Four Mile Creek, where we actually were really close to yesterday before we had to turn back, uh, was a place where Matt, the instructor that we saw from uh, helping with the Koreans, <clears throat> the instructor that we saw helping with the Koreans a few days ago actually had his 50 day course when he was testing his grit and he says like in that area he built like a like a little like fish trap that may still be active or helpful 
to uh, get some fish, so that'll be fun. Maybe we'll eat some lunch over there if we're lucky. Uh, for this morning, though, we're just going to eat a little bit of bread, and I have a protein shake right here, cookies and cream, and that's going to give us the fuel we need to push onward. <coughs> and um, I have the, I'm venting out the Jeep right now because it just hasn't been vented out for a while because we've been in cold climates, so I don't want to open it up. But today's going to be a nice day. The sun's already shining. We're in warmer climates, so I'm just have a fan in there pushing all the air out getting all the debris lint and moisture out of the jeep and that's going to help me uh, in the long run so time to drink up and hit the trail we've been uh, trekking down for about an hour now and uh it's it started out just really gradually going down i thought it'd be like that the whole way down but it's uh getting steeper and steeper and we're not there yet. I'm gonna keep pushing down, but it may be one of those that we just have to uh, find an alternative route, but we're so close yet so far away. And right here, Pat, in this section, it just keeps going steeper and steeper. So I can get down this part, but I'm not sure about further down there. But that's one of the uh, one of the cons of exploring, you know. Like sometimes you 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 hit dead ends. In fact, a lot of times you hit dead ends. And you have to find a different route. So, but it is gorgeous, and who knows how many travelers have gone through here? Probably not very many. That's exciting. Let's see. Let's see if we can push on a little further. Oh, look at this. Uh, deer kill, I believe. I think he was actually killed in this area. Or further up and then just dropped some time ago. We may have hit a dead end here, like this deer. <laughs> I don't know if I can go further. We're going to check it out right now. Just trying to see if there's anything unusual about the deer that I've seen with uh, hominin evidence. Well suggested North American hominid deer kills. Well, looks like a pretty straightforward mount lion kill. And the fact that it's all in this spot just tells me like it was left alone because of where it's at. All right, let's go see if we even stand a chance over here. Oh, you see what I'm looking at? I'll be able to get down through here. Uh. <laughs> yeah, that looks like a no-go for me. That looks too slippery. I'm not willing to risk it. But it is beautiful. Water's all seeping out. But I think this is the last hurdle because I'm almost down to the, the the creek down there. Not to worry, I think there is an alternative way right here above me. Ironically, where this stops, there is there's kind of like a ledge, a pretty big ledge, and it continues this way. So I think I can continue that way and then go down one of the steep ravines and in. So. That is the, uh, that's going to be the plan. <laughs> and hopefully I don't turn into, you know, those dead deer. <sighs> it's definitely intimidating trying to make a foothold here right next to this ravine. 
and uh, do camera work. But we're almost there. I think we're 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 gonna get there. So gotta put you back in my bag because I need all hands and feet for this one. All right, continuing onward. So I have good news and bad news. Uh, the good news is I think I found a route this through here. Uh, the bad news is, is in my excitement to go explore the route more, I totally put a, stuck my hand in a cactus. And so I just finished get, fishing them out of my hand. I'm gonna fish them out of the glove and then we're gonna continue. And it just happens to be, of course, right here next to the ledge and the deer kill. Oh, what an exciting place to have to stop. Hopefully no mountain lions take advantage of this. All right. I'm going to continue prying these thorns out. Just came down the steep uh, valley, canyon, whatever you want to call it over there. And here we are, Clearwater Creek. It's really small, but here it opens up and gets larger, so that's exciting. Let me capture some fish. I'm hungry. So. For now, however, uh, we're just gonna keep following all the way down to where it meets uh, Four Mile Creek, the one that we were at yesterday. And uh, it's supposed to be a really pretty area. I mean, it already is a beautiful area, but where they converge, it's supposed to be really nice. So we go there, set up a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna eat some snacks and uh, see if we can catch anything. We'll use the net and then we'll, of course, uh, See if we can catch anything by hand. Ah, let's push onward. Here's a good sign. I don't know if you can see them in there. But there's a bunch of uh, brook trout. Let's see if I can get a better look without them running off. Oh, oh, okay, it's okay, it's good. There's one, they're small. I'm hoping uh, when we get uh, further down, where there's more water, we'll have larger ones. Make a fire, chill out and just enjoy this. Look at that huge canyon coming in. <sighs> well, look at that, we made it. We made it to where both uh, the creeks converge. Oh man, absolutely stunning and beautiful. I'm curious to see what's left uh, of the 50 day class because they were up here, I don't know how long, just surviving during the summer. So let's see if there's anything we can take advantage of ourselves. It's a lot of work. Uh, well, we already came prepared with the, our own you know, collapsible fish net, which goes a long way. They're really light, easy to use, and you don't have to monitor them. So, I think there's a beaver pond right here too. Yeah, this is beautiful. Oh, wow. Uh, it's amazing to be able to trek into places like this so isolated so far from civilization back in the day this used to be like a place for cattle and grazing but that it's not used for that anymore so it's just it's just left in serenity found something look at this this was uh, relatively fresh. Someone used this area as like their shelter. Improvised with some pieces of wood they found. But you can see the cuts here are pretty fresh. In the maybe last six months or so. This is a beautiful spot. They have everything they need here. I want to see if we can find any mats. Uh, little uh, fish, 
pond trap thing. Oh, look at that tire, guys. Over here you can see uh, where the, uh, the beaver at one time chewed this up to make a beaver pond. I see the beaver down up ahead. I don't know if there's a beaver here. I don't see anything fresh, freshly cut, which would indicate a beaver still active. Oh, look at this. So this is what uh, what uh, Matt made to try to like keep the fish in there so they can swim in, but it's hard for them to swim out so we can catch them by hand. Let's see if there's any fish even in there. Oh yeah, there's one little fish in there, he just swam away. Okay, time to see if we can find some food. Some good sized fish in here. It'll be harder to get them though, because it's so, so big. But we're gonna try. Lo and behold, another shelter site. Um, looks like they're further up in here. Right here, they probably had one. See where they cut it? It's flat. Over here. Oh, look at this. Maybe making a trap. Or simulating one. Yeah, there's a lot of leaves here they could use too. Ah, uh, well, maybe not as many when they came. That's cool. Oh, look at this. Here's where they were. Another one. Nice. This, this is nice. I wouldn't be surprised if this one was Matt's. It's a good spot. Plenty of shade. Look at this basket. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is so cool. Oh, maybe it's not Matt's. Matt is a perfectionist. And this is really nice. And this was tough to make. But Matt probably just carried his out with him. Look over there, a bone. That's cool. But this fire spot's a good spot. Fire's gonna just radiate back at you. Let's keep looking. Maybe we'll find more. Here's uh, nearby the other one. It might be part of the same one. But basically, uh, this was like a little shelter that I presume he just threw more leaves and stuff on top of him or something else to stay warm and didn't use a fire. After exploring and finding a lot of the little campsites, it's time to use some more modern means to uh, acquire food. Since I'm pretty hungry, I want to just chill today until I have to leave. And so I'm going to cast this net out and probably explore. This thing's cheap and simple and just stowed in my day pack. And look at that. So, something like this goes a long way. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw it with some rock so it sinks to the bottom. I'm going to bait it by putting some beef jerky in here and then uh, see if we catch anything. They told me there are crawdads in there. I didn't see any, but maybe this will this will lure them. So let's go through, cast this out and uh, see what happens. So I keep seeing fish in this area. I've uh, scared them off since then. But uh, this is where I'm gonna put like some rocks to keep it out on the bottom. Nothing too big. The water is pretty nice here, so it's not, it's 
not uh, moving a lot. So maybe just three uh, rocks like this. And then I'm gonna zip that up so they can't leave. You seem to like to swim in that area, so. I'm just going to, I have the rocks in there. And I'm just gonna cast them out here, then tie them on off, and maybe wait an hour and come check it. I'd be stoked to be a crawdads. I like crawdads. And hopefully, it'll the smell will lure them in or whatnot. Now we'll just uh, look for stuff to make a fire, and this this will burn like really well and really quick. The whole thing will just nicely ignite and make our lives a lot easier. Once we've got that, we can get uh, smaller pieces to help build. We gotta start our home beginnings with fires. Unless you have like a propellant of some kind. Just gotta nurse them. And these will work great. Nope, nothing. And time is now on our side. It's getting close to having to leave. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> it's, uh, I, we didn't get any fish, but we only had an hour to have that trap out. Which is fine. The main part of this mission isn't to uh, just, you know, live off the land. It's to recon foremost and then later uh, come back because I do want to come back to a place like this. This place is amazing. It has so many resources. I just don't have time. So, what we're going to do though is we're going to just build a little fire because I got, I want to try this. I've never tried this. It's ripe. And it's, uh, let's see if I can show you. And uh, it's ready to eat. It's from a uh, prickly pear. It has a bunch of small little thorns on it, so I'm gonna burn them off. <laughs> and then uh, try it out. Hopefully I don't, I, I do it correctly. So, so anyway, you know, we got a bunch of this, which is gonna work fabulously. And I have some uh, cedar in there too. So I'm just gonna throw it all in there like that. It's gonna go up in flames. And I'm just gonna throw a bunch of these little guys on here and just build it up. Build her up. I'm just gonna actually rip these in half, scatter them out so they're easy to pick. And, uh, Here's some uh, sage to make it smell better. But it also burns really well right now when it's dry. The next thing I have is a bunch more of this, which I'll just throw on top and have that burn. So we have a lot going burning when we get this thing going.
think that's done. <laughs> Open her up, and uh, I guess just scoop some out. And hope that there is no thorns in this. Mmm. Tastes really good. The seeds are really hard. I was hoping I could just eat them. I've been in other places they get way bigger. Further down south. We're uh, packing back up here. And uh, we're gonna be heading back. I think it's been a good uh, day of reconning so that uh, I can come back here another time and uh, stay here longer. Maybe I'll come with the survival school. Uh, on that note, keeping with the tradition theme of this of not only surviving and exploring, but also because this is an area where uh, this, these hominid species have been met or run into, I think it's totally natural that I present that there, there's a student that came here, I'm not going to say names, I don't know if he wants me to say it or not, uh, but here at this spot, he, uh, it was about 2.30 he said at, at night, and he was awake, because you wake up a lot when you're just trying to survive off the land, you have to stoke your fire and stuff. And he heard what sounded like something just ripping a huge tree, like just snap. And he didn't know what to make of it. And he's <clears throat> he's been an outdoorsman his whole life. Obviously now like permanent survival. Like he grew up in a place like r remote into the mountains that you can only get into by plane. So like he knows he knows his stuff. And he did, he's heard widowmakers before snapping, you know, limbs. And obviously we can't confirm nor deny what made that break but the thought the fact that it was unusual to him and that that was his thought that maybe it could be something like like a bigfoot is intriguing not to mention that wood booger hill right is just right up the canyon this way and that the the interview that gentleman was just right by, this way down the canyon and further up going towards Cripple Creek. And if you look at this, this is so much like the areas that this happens in. You know, for my own personal encounter and for those of others, it's the same similar environment where you have lots of cover and brush and water. Even though it may be dry, there's water nearby. <coughs> you have different climates and life zones because of the elevation gain and drop and that just excites me that's happening in you know like like a, like a baseline a baseline where you can you at least here where you have the same types of not only vegetation but also geology and formations like right behind me there's huge like rocks everywhere like huge cliffs the Rocky Mountains, so you're just going to find them everywhere. Especially when you uh, also add in the vegetation. It's it's very similar, you know, because we're not super high up in the mountains. Not to say that they're not there, but the areas where I feel like the most activities occurring, at least to my knowledge, and personally, 
is in this environment that we're in right now. Okay, now how are we leaving? We are actually going to try, so we came up this one, this valley right here, and we're gonna go back up it, but instead of going all the way to that, that, that canyon that we went down that was difficult, we're gonna try something that hopefully will pay off. So we are going to just hike up that ridge and then go over to the right side of that cliff and up onto the mesa and hope that from there on out it'll be pretty easy back to the jeep so that first part there is going to be the hardest and i think i can make it i was looking earlier up there from a higher vantage point and unless there's a cliff in my way to get up to that hill spot we should be able to make it oh just to give you some perspective normally it takes the survival class on their 50 day uh, journey, you know, sur doing 50 days survival training, which is very impressive. About four days to get down into this area that we're at. So the fact that it took us, you know, two and a half, three hours shows you <laughs> that we went at a very quick pace and we took really rough terrain just to get down here. So I just keep that in mind as far as um why you know like a why we can't stay down here longer because it's going to take just as much if not more since we're going the alternative route to get out and since i'm going out some other route i want to make sure i have enough daylight because if that doesn't work out the direction that i'm going in then i want more time to correct so again four days to get down here and because we're on a recon to inspect the area and routes over here. You know, we packed light, we didn't pack to spend the night, but we got in here quick. And now we have to hopefully get out of here quick. You know where we're going to next? Canyon City. Well, first I'm gonna try to find a shower. I thought about taking, a like washing my hair and taking a shower in this creek, but I'm gonna spend the night for tomorrow. I'm just gonna get all messy again. I wanna look presentable for the librarians, but, uh, so you might find a place closer to Canyon City. We'll see. Oh, what is this? There's some large white bird flying around over here. It almost looked, almost looks like a seagull, but there's no way. All right, I'm gonna try to get it on camera. Oh, it's a bald eagle, that's what it is. And that is a plane. Of course, that bald eagle shows up as soon as I put the tripod away. Figures. Well, I'll, I'm sure I got terrible, terrible footage of it, but <laughs> I, I think there's little bits and pieces of it. Oh, maybe I'll try to slow it down. All right, let's go. Woo, we're about halfway up and you can see we were way down there. That's that open plain and that's where the, the creek merges. And we came all the way up this valley and then we've just been going straight up almost. Oh, you can see it on the side here. How, how ridiculously vertical almost this is. There's that huge cliff you saw earlier. Oh. Oh. I am sweating a lot and we still have quite a bit more to go. <sighs> so, so what do you think, huh? Whew. That's far down there, huh? Oh, can't wait to go down there and actually spend some time. Just camp out. Oh, it was beautiful. I have to keep making sure I don't hit any cactuses on the way up with my vibrant five fingers. Can you see more alert, but it does take more work. All right, let's get to the top of this mesa. Oh, this is freaking awesome. <laughs> I'm, uh, 
nearly to the top if I'm coming down there it's right behind me I think at least like uh right there is the uh the top of the plateau starts I hope it <laughs> so anyway it's pretty crazy as I reflect like this adventure it's like insane rigorous terrain and it's amazing how the human body can like go on such steep surfaces without falling over I mean I sure I got tired I'm in pretty good shape but for the most part like I I was able to get up relatively quickly and upon further reflection I uh, also realize how thankful I am for little things I almost never have to use like tweezers and furthermore you know it really showed me how a little incident like the thorns from the cacti in my fingers how much time that took and that was with like tools to actually do something about it oh look at that you guys see that wow that is gorgeous um with tools to actually implement it, it took it took a big part of my time you know like it took over I think half an hour to do it and honestly it would have really hindered me and restricted me had I not had tweezers to take it out like it would just every because I had to be climbing in that area scrambling even coming up here I was scrambling because there were cliffs I had to scale up so little tools like that go a long way and I'm normally pretty vigilant but obviously I still get uh Get, get get complacent too so anyway just some things to consider almost to the top of the mesa I hope I'll let you guys know <laughs> either way because once we're up there then it'll be like easy it'll be like a long walk but easy walking all right got this last bit hopefully right behind me and then we're we should be there made it up oh man it's beautiful i just can't state that enough here let's look over the edge So yesterday we went down that steep canyon and that canyon took us all the way down over there, over to this area right there. And then we hiked up and stopped right in this area here right before it bends uh, to come around. Pretty beautiful. Look at this wall. Oh, it's gorgeous. So here we can see the, uh, this used to be an ocean. This used to be the ground before the mountains pushed up to form this plateau up here. Oh, this is so beautiful. Cripple Creek's that way, up north. The, the east is that way. And then of course west, where we're going. Well, we're heading more northwest to get back to the Jeep. And you can also see, once again, down there, that's where we came from. 
man. So cool. All right, I'm just gonna keep talking about it. I'm gonna look at it by myself a little bit and then uh, head on. That would've been a good shot. Food everywhere. Found ourselves a bunny. <sighs> of course we can't, uh, we have no means once again to obtain it, but we'll just look at it in peace. It's watching us. Some uh, closing remarks of this trip as far as uh, Bigfoot's concerned. And that's, uh, uh, the reality is that just like any elusive animal, the likelihood of you finding it, it or it, the animal itself or evidence of it is pretty slim to none. So having those expectations I think helps because you don't want to have over expectations to the point where everything you find in the environment is somehow a tribute to this creature. Then you get those YouTube channels where every single thing they find, whether it has a pattern or not, whether it's natural or not, somehow has to do with this hominid creature. And that's just the wrong way to go about it. Maybe it's more, maybe it gets you more publicity, I don't know. But it's not, it's not in search of truth. And maybe you are getting excited and you're losing the, uh, the fact that you're not being critical of what you're finding. You know, and I, and I do it too. I get excited and I think I see like multiple patterns in the environment that I think uh, are attributed to this hominid species. And sometimes maybe I'm right, but most of the time I'm wrong and I have to go give it a little bit of time and think about it critically again, do more research on known animals and phenomena and find where, that it was something nat natural either an animal did on the environment or in nature, the elements did. So, <coughs> if you're gonna come out here and look, just be aware of your environment. And if you're lucky, you'll stumble upon something that doesn't fit into our understanding of the natural order of things because <laughs> you've stumbled upon something that Sasquatch created. But the likelihood slim. I mean, of all the stuff I found, it's a lot of it's just been going to the same spot over and over and over and over again until something happened or I, I came across something. Rarely has it ever been that I come to an area for a couple days like this and come across something. But some, you know, sometimes it is. But this is the beginning, you know, the start of reconning understanding and at the same time you know, explore and just live out here so just leave your expectations at home don't expect to find something because then you're going to find something just because you want to and not because you're it's actually you're actually finding some truth oh man look at this oh, you guys see that back there that's so pretty I am so spoiled to be able to come out here <laughs> and just explore like this wilderness on BLM land. <sighs> but I am getting hungry. We are getting close to the Jeep. Not as close as I would like, of course. But anyway, I'm glad I get to share with everyone that's watching. So thank you, hope you're enjoying. Now to continue on. <laughs> Thanks for joining me on this adventure. Um, next is driving down to Canyon City. And hopefully this time we'll get to go to the library and research this place. So join me then to see what happens. Only time and fate will tell where I go next. Hopefully it's a library.
so I can nerd out. Great news, <laughs> great news. I found a place to uh, take a shower. It's at a, uh, it's at a KOA. Oh man, watch this. This is gonna be like a magic trick. You see me now? <laughs> Bam! Oh, I feel like a million bucks. That felt amazing. Oh, oh. Oh. I took my time, my sweet time. So now we're gonna head into Canyon City and find some grub, you know? I want something unhealthy. Yeah, that's what I want. So let's see what we find. We're heading on in and looking wonderful, I might add. <laughs> yeah, all right, next stop, food. So unfortunately, I never made it to the library. <laughs> still, like three times the charm, but still didn't make it. I ended up having to go home early, so I never made it, and unfortunately got a lot of stuff stolen. However, Glenn, who's been such an inspirational help, he did find it. So let's hear what he had to say. So what'd you find? Well, I'll tell you. Okay, so I talked to you about Booger Red Hill, and it's very cool. And I know that booger is a another term for the Sasquatch or swamp yeah, monster yeah. or whatever. So I was very excited about it, thinking because Cripple Creek up in the mountains, booger red. It sounds very cool. Unfortunately, I talked to uh, one of the gals. I was doing a project up there, and I was talking to one of the ladies at the Victor Kim at the Victor City Hall, and she sent me some information on Booger Red Hill. And it was initially about a cowboy from Oklahoma who was scarred, hence the booger. They called him a little booger because he got burned or something. Yeah. And he had red hair, so they called him Booger Red. I went, oh, bummer. Then I did more, some more research, though, and found out he was from Oklahoma. Oh. And he never seemed to make it to Teller County in yeah. Scripper Creek, so I got all excited again. Then I got more information about Booger Red, who is a cowboy and horseman from the Four Mile area of Teller County. This is from the Tombstone Inscriptions webpage, the Booger Red Grave. In fact, there's a picture of Booger Red. I can send this to you. Um, he got his unlikely nickname from his thatch of red hair and the verb to booger a cowboy term describing a horse shying or running wild. So evidently, Booger Red is a rockin' cowboy from Teller County and the whole Cripple Creek area, so I don't think um, Booger Red Hill is so named... It was named after this uh, cowboy. After this cowboy. See, it really isn't it interesting there are two... Yeah. Cowboys with the same name of Booger Red in totally different areas. But, in fact, this guy, Booger Red, his grave is up there. Um, gosh. Uh, is marked with stones, but no tombstone identifies the site. It's a private property, inaccessible to the public, uh, but near Booger Red Hill in Teller County. So... Well, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> well, you know, I appreciate that. And I guess that explains why Booger Red Hill is not red. Right, right. You know, it's always like, a, all we can do is search. I'm, I'm thankful yeah. that you found it. And but it's cool. It, was, it wasn't what I was hoping for. Yeah. But it's like what we what, what we got. So yeah, well, and it's, it's, better, it's better to be disappointed with reality than to be, I don't know, faking optimism and making... A, up stuff. I think this is yeah, absolutely. This is well, better. This is the only way to find truth. Yeah, exactly. It's the, the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth. where it leads. So, yeah. hey, thanks so much. And hey, I thank you. Thanks to... To... So there you have it. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't what I was hoping for, but the search for the truth doesn't always give you what you want. 
So, Booger Red Hill has no association with Sasquatch whatsoever, but that doesn't stop that there are so many encounters going on in that region. And that's not going to stop me or all the other ones searching for the truth. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, follow, share. And if you have an encounter, you know, send me an email at encounters at modernexplorer.me. Till next time, the search for truth, knowledge, and freedom.